Hello everyone, I'm Andy Davo and welcome to a replay analysis video. Um, in this game we're playing as Chaos and we're playing against Undead. And the coach I've got for you today is Ducky. He's got one of the highest win rate um, wins win rates in Blood Bowl 2. Um, and this is taken from one of the playoff finals games, uh, the round of 64, um, which has recently had this uh, Chaos run of mine. Um, only last season in Champ Ladder. So this is the round of 64. And uh, the one I, reason I wanted to look at this game was because uh, typically in the playoffs recently, I've been struggling. Uh, so I won't spoil the result, um, but I will just quickly pause it while we're watching me set up um, and just have a quick look at the teams um, and we'll, we'll dive straight in. So uh, I'm playing as the Chaos. Uh, the team value on this was uh, 2060. Uh, we've got 14 players, three completely rookie goats on the line of scrimmage. Um, a good movement seven ball carrier uh, with two heads, so a little bit of extra uh, dodging agility uh, blocks your hands. Um, particularly, totally serviceable here. Um, we've got two mighty blow piling on claws, one of which has also got tackle. Very useful for killing the ghouls. Um, the four Chaos Warriors all have got block, guard and mighty blow, and three of them have additionally got claw. We've also got a frenzy player with tackle, just in case we really need to knock something over. Um, that's what he's there for. Uh, and then just to round it out, we've got a couple of extra uh, guard players. So uh, we're floating six guard total. Um, facing off, we've got um, Ducky's team. He's got um, 15 players. Uh, he's also playing uphill team value. So he's got a wizard. And um, what you can't see here is he's got a babe. Um, and he's also got a bribe. So uh, 15 players with regen, with a babe. Um, my chances of actually um, doing removals on a permanent basis and getting below 11 players for any given start of drive, not high. Um, so we've got to fake, we've got to factor that in. That means that trying to nail players during a drive is probably very important. We should try and focus on the higher value players rather than hanging, you know, trying to get rid of anything to give us a numerical advantage later in the game. Uh, Ducky here deliberately has set a long way back because um, if we think about the strategy of the half, I'm going to want to try and score on turn eight, give him no chance to reply. He's going to try and use the wizard and turn me over and score. Um, and neither of those things are going to happen in turn one. So for him, his turn one is probably, can I get a blitz off with Mighty Blow? That's it. That's all he's going to look to do. Um, he doesn't, So he doesn't need to give me a claw hit on something valuable. That's why all the valuable players are set way back. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about how can we maximize damage? Well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to pile on uh, one of the most valuable players, but which one of those is easiest to knock over and most valuable? It's clearly the strength four. So we need to block uh, on a diagonal here, um, and therefore we're gonna block there, and we're gonna block there. Um, I can probably wrap players around the top because he's given me a free set of squares to walk through here. Uh, we can try and make some of these uh, three dice blocks. Probably should have made some more of these three dice um, earlier on, but, but we didn't. Um, Overall, it's an all right first turn. Um, we should sort of dive straight in. So the kickoff there is um, he's got fame, uh, although we both roll a one, so he gets a free reroll. Um, I think the fame is quite relevant here. Um, we should bear that in mind. So while, while turn one sort of plays out, there's nothing particularly exciting, I don't think, about turn one. Um, I'll just quickly sort of talk to you as well. Um, the point of doing these replay analysis videos for me is to try and find out the weaknesses in my gameplay and fix them. Um, and for you, hopefully, uh, there are some interest to you uh, and they are uh, you know, valuable in some way. And you can try and improve your own game. If you do want to try and improve your own game and you want to have a one-to-one -one session with me, you can do so. Just contact me on Discord. I'll do a coaching session. Uh, it's charged out at £25 um, per session, however long that session takes. Normally you get about 90 minutes or so. Okay, so we got a removal. It wasn't on the strength four, sadly, um, but we did get it on someone. It has regened, so uh, we're just a player up for this drive. And we now try and bring players in to support one another. Um, and I couldn't go and stand in that square there. It would have been nice to walk the warrior forward one more, um, but we can't do that. So he's going to probably blitz one of these goats and he's going to use Mighty Blow. Yep, in fact, he just uses Mighty Blow and Block. And he knocks over 
uh, one of our guards. I would have rather he knocked over this one, so probably could have done something different to try and set that up. Um, and what you'll see from Ducky now is uh, a classic sort of higher team value strategy, which is that you'll start to see lines of players, um, probably sort of an S shape normally, um, and there's no there's no real gaps in between them. And the reason for that is if we just pause this for a second, um, imagine trying to blitz one of these players. Unless you're blitzing the mummy, which is on a corner here, um, you're going to have to give away hits in return. So if I want to blitz his mummy, fine, but I've got to stand things here um, so I can get two dice on it, and he might get chance back. Um, same with this poss possibility here. I'm going to try and find something to punch, but unless I want to punch a ghoul with bludge, and notice my tackle fly is lying down, um, I've not got anything that I can just snipe for free and run away. Looking at this now, and, and this is the second time I'm watching this through, um, I don't think I would probably go for the target I did go for. Um, so my initial thinking when I saw this live was, oh, the mummy, it's got strength five, it doesn't have block, it's easy to take down, um, it's got guard, it's one of his players that lets him fight, um, and we can get two dice on that for not too much consequence. Let's, go, let's do it. Looking at it for the second time round, I think I would rather just punch this white uh, here because I can blitz it straight forward. I'm not piling on because he's bribe and he's dirty player, so there's nothing that's going to let me pile that on. So I may as well punch that and leave. What I end up doing is pushing players in, as you'll see now, and by pushing a load of players in, um, we, we take three blocks next turn. I don't think I could do this particularly any better than I did. I think the problem with it was the choice of the way I chose, you know, way I chose to do it. So we've got to play around the wizard a little bit. And once you put one in, you should always go all in or not in. Um, so I'm choosing to go sort of all in on these guys um, and try and really heavily base them. Uh, that's to set up a hit next turn. And I should have moved these guys because I'm now wanting to re-roll that. If that was a double skull, um, if we pause it just for a second and note, if that was a double skull, he could possibly have got in because the mummy would be able to deal with one of these guys. Um, and then you're looking at a free-ish gap to get through, especially depending on what actually happened to that. So a micro error, I think, there. Um, and it comes from not making sure the ball is completely safe before doing anything. So um, now you might be able to guess if you actually pause the video here, you should be able to guess what Ducky does before he does it. Um, and I'll give you a clue. He is only bothered about throwing blocks right now. Throwing blocks and getting a foul. Throwing blocks and getting a foul. And I think that having watched this back the second time, I didn't see it in real time, but I gave him a load of free hits here. So that's one hit with Mighty Blow. That's two hits with Mighty Blow. Granted, they're both armor nine, but that was a 15% chance of losing a player each time. Three hits with Mighty Blow. Skillfully walks forward, so now he's got a foul on plus two. So that's three hits with Mighty Blow, and then an armor seven dirty player hit, which is a, maybe another 30% chance of removal. So Ducky can consider himself unlucky there that he didn't even break armor um, on all of those. And he's got no intention of going for the ball. I, it doesn't need to be bulletproof safe. Um... That last block was a little naughty. Uh, and in real time, I spent a long time thinking about this turn because I want to claw palm hit the mummy again. I've got that sort of obsessed in my head that killing off the mummies here is great. I, I think while the killing the mummies would be nice, the, the ghouls and the whites are really the stars of the show because if he doesn't have them, he can't outposition me. And I'm not going to win this game through attrition, so the mummies are not super duper dangerous. So some really stupidly convoluted chain push um, so that we can then run that guy up, which I should have done beforehand, and then blitz the mummy. And we get the KO. So finding, finding the KO there at this point, um, with two players ahead, we should be fine. This, sh this should absolutely be completely fine. 9 versus 11. Or 11 versus 9. Um, and what I do like that I have managed to do here um, is that we've now got this dirty player under control. 
it's tagged by four players. He's not going to run away and foul me and get a good foul off. And I think that was important in this particular drive to start to control the dirty player and stop him fouling. So he's had one foul, but that's it. Ducky goes back to his lines look. So this isn't this isn't sort of dice related. This is Ducky doing exactly what Ducky wants to do um, and getting his nice lines off. Um, what he was looking for there, I think, was the power to push the goal away from tackle. And he's gone back to the lines. This see this shape again? You saw it. You saw it in turn one. You're now seeing it on turn three. This is absolutely um, completely fine. Now, I'm going to pause it now, um, and I just want to try and get you to think about this shape and think about this turn. So, when I'm looking at this now, I think my blitz is fine, but my ending position is not fine. Um, and I'll play through the first two, next two turns, and we might come back to this point, because this is where, at the time, I was absolutely... <clears throat> uh, so, you know, let's, let's just see it, right? <laughs> let's see it. But I think if you want to learn from the replay, this is a turn to consider. So the ball at the moment is under zero threat. If it comes forward, it will be under threat. Uh, we have tackle mighty blow to go for uh, the ghoul. It's also a good idea to try and control the zombie. So I want to put something on the corner to, to control that. Um, but we now know that he's going to blitz here to push the, get the zombie free. We have to go in that direction because if we go this way and get a push, he's there. If we can get another push, he's there and he's basing me. So we've had two dice, four dice, six dice on this guy looking for a 55% out, a 33% out and a 33% out. We missed all three of them. Not completely un un outrageous, but a little disappointing. Um, and so what we've managed to do there, if you remember at the start of the turn, the ball was totally safe. It was completely out of range and it was down here. The blitz was on a good high value target, nothing with regen, strength four and guard, all of the tick boxes we want to get rid of. But I've taken it forward and put it under some threat. And what I've left here is probably, probably punishable, should, should be gone for. Um, a blitz here on, you know, with, with a strength four into this guy. Four plus, one, two, three, four, four plus, two plus. If you wang that through Samba, um, you'll probably find that's like maybe 67%, I would imagine, maybe 70%. Um, with a reroll, um, and if he gets the pow, which is another fifty-five percent, so he's got a thirty-five percent chance ish of sacking the ball here. Um, the ball goes off the field. If it comes that way, I'm screwed. If it comes long distance that way, I'm screwed. To be fair, if it goes long distance down this way, he's got these two ghouls that can respond, and all of these players that will be able to wrap round. I could be in trouble. It's in the rain. He. I think this is a chance to win the game. And it's also a chance to win the game when there's no one at risk. So I think I would play for it. Um, he doesn't. He does quite a nice move, but he doesn't play for it. Um, and I think it was there. So this was my first chance to lose the game. And at the time, I didn't see it. And it was because I made a, mis a positioning mistake. I chose to push a flank when actually, I think at this point, we should have centralised. Um, because I'm running into trouble. He just needs to stand some players here and I'm not getting past. Yep, all right. I'm not getting past now. Um, I'm already two players ahead, so I just need to grind this out some more. Just carry on grinding. Focus and grind. And if we flip it round from Ducky's point of view, look. Yeah, that's why that move comes across. He's worried that I come across I go I go sideways. And he causes the KO. So he doesn't actually he, he finds he finds the knockdown. Um and then this turn, this turn is um, what can probably only be described as a disaster. Um, again, I think I should centralize. Um, and I think, I think I would blitz this zombie. I still think I'd blitz the zombie. Um, but the ball is certainly not safe. And if click the ghouls. If I put the ball like back here, it's safe. If I can bring players round the side here, the ball is safe. So what we could have done was this guy could have wrapped over to here somewhere. And then this ghoul is not getting through. This guy could have been the assist. We can blitz here. <clears throat> and with seven squares of ball carrier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could be there. There, with a with my um with my tackle guy there and another tackle guy in this sort of area. Totally fine. Ball carries over here. 
well away from his movement players. So I think this was a, this was my other um, my other uh, another mistake. Um, we get we get quite rewarded here. We get another removal, so we're now um, back to being one ahead because he's had a casualty that has regened a KO and a casualty that hasn't, and we've had two KOs. And that square there is fine. That square there is not. So this is where we've opened ourselves up to a second problem um, because I think there are two different locations you can drop. You could drop a lightning bolt. Um, in another commentary, I, I, I heard a little bit of that and I think um, someone I respect a lot looked at this and said, I can see a lightning bolt. If we flip this round um, and just review it from here, we've got lightning bolt either of these two players. The white can go one, two, three, four, five, six, go for it. You can then blitz this guy. So I think you blitz you lightning bolt the ball on a two plus, blitz this guy, and then you can be th three, three, sorry. Um, you've got these guys to come around and tag these guys. Uh, and I've opened myself up to a lightning bolt, which I think I think is completely uh, not not cool. Not when we're we don't need to be there. And so what I think I should be doing is thinking a lot more about the strategy of the half and not thinking about the mechanics of that particular turn so much. Um I need to be thinking, where do I want to be on turn eight? Where do I therefore want to be on turn seven? What do I want to be on turn six? And backtracking over the course of those three turns, what I ended up doing was sort of panicking a little bit, not thinking about where I need to put the ball. And my turn four was not great, which led to a not great turn five, which then leads to this. So uh, that wasn't a fireball, that was an asteroid. And the casualty out of all those four players was the ball carrier. Um, in that carnage, the ball carrier did actually only get badly hurt. Um, and I was able to apothecary him because I thought if I'm going to have any chance of winning this, I'm going to need a ball carrier. And so uh, we pretty sure I'm bringing him back. Uh, Ducky now starts tagging out players so this guy's not going to go anywhere this guy's not going to go anywhere um, and I think if I was him at this point my next move now is one, two, three, four, five, six. so he's got to get out of the way um, one, two, three, four. with a re-roll that's 75% five, six, seven. I think you can go and do that and you're fine um, what he chooses to do is the slightly sort of greedier play, which is I'm going to put a two plus in there first, which is fine five times in six, but now the four pluses are naked. And if this, and if this flubs, actually I might get way back in. It didn't, I wasn't fortunate. <laughs> I didn't get, didn't get rewarded. Um, but then he makes the double go for it to try and stand away from this guy. Um, no one break, so he's completely fine. Um, and then in, in real time, I have to admit, I was a little bit sort of tilted at this point and didn't play this turn out particularly great. Um, what I think I should have done in retrospect was blitz the white with this guy lying down here. And then one, two, three, four, five, go and stand and mark the ball. If it's zero, zero at half time and the wizard's gone, it's not the end of the world. It's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. If you do what I'm about to do now, you end up losing a square of movement. I can now only get to there. If he picks the ball up and runs off with it and deals with this guy, I'm screwed. I am just screwed. I also try and stop the white getting out. That only works if this guy is still standing. And he should, should be able to stop that from being a problem, you know, being a thing. If this is a frenzy hit and we get push, push, maybe I can maybe I can argue that the white doesn't get out. Um, but nah, it's it's not strong play. It's not strong play. That this guy should be down here. He should be marking the ball. Because it also means the ball carrier then has to stand up to be the assist. So, so far we've managed to find a few things that I could have done wrong. Um, of course, the uh, you know, demolition job on the fireball is not great. And in terms of what was it, um, I think it's uh, it's a 50%, and then it's a 25%, then it's a 12%, uh, and then it's a 6%. So, um, you know, that, that's not high. He found a, a 6% play. Um, however, I put myself in that position. I shouldn't have put myself in that position. And 
this is a common theme, I think, with my games in Chalice, which is that something bad happens and I'm going to need to learn from it. And I need to not say, oh, something bad happens. It's, my, it's a dice game. Yes, but I need to do something about it. And in this instance, it was it was avoidable. And I hadn't respected the fact that he had a chance to beat it beforehand. So, well played, Ducky. He takes his, he gets his opportunity and takes it. So we get rid of one of the ghouls, which is quite useful. Um, and if at this point we can actually chip two or three of the ghouls total, um, then maybe we've got a good chance of turning him over, pushing this into overtime, because I'm thinking about this game from a three halves perspective. Um, which is the 1-1 uh, at the end of the drive, at the end of the game, pushing into overtime. If I receive the ball, this is fine. So, I should have played more for 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm not playing the strategy out of the game uh, enough. So, Ducky creating the box there. When you see a box, you know you can always manipulate it. Um, and he knocks me over there, runs around the side, and then surfs, ironically, my frenzy player. And we also know that he can't possibly not score next turn unless unless he rolls dice. Um, and then he goes for a foul. Doesn't choose to use the bribe here because that then lets him foul. Um, even though it's without dirty player, lets him foul in the second half. So I think that was a smart choice not to throw the, uh, the bribe at that. And we'll watch it from my point of view again. Um, we've only got one choice, which is to go for maximum damage. So we've got a claw hit on the mummy, which we knock out. So that's both mummies gone. If the KOs are kind to us here, maybe we could actually turn this guy over. And then what I'm looking for here is a knockdown here um, to let the warrior gun stand in that square there, because then we've got a claw tackle hit, sorry, a, 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 a hit here on a strength four ghoul. So this will be the second time this game we've been able to palm potentially um, the ghoul with strength four and guard. Go for the blitz, use the reroll over here, and it whiffs. So, oh well. Now I, th I think here I would have scored. I understand why he didn't. He's looking for a mighty blow hit on this killer, which when I haven't got an apothecary carries a lot more value than if I do. But it was a you know a one in a thousand chance to not score, and kind of send you through to the next round. I don't think killing this guy sends you through to the next round. I think not scoring here is more is more dangerous. Um, would I do, would I absolutely hand on heart not make that same play? Oh, I don't know. I don't. I think I probably would. I think I'd do it. So I can sit on my moral high ground and say I wouldn't do it, but I think I probably would. Shouldn't do it, but would. So. Um, we can have a quick look. I had three KOs. Two of them have come back. In fact, the two good ones have come back. So we're looking pretty solid here. We've definitely got 11. Um, if we then roll over to his bench, um, he's got a babe, remember, and he didn't get two, three of his players back. Um, we have a quick look at the KO rolls. So didn't get that one back. Didn't get that one back. I didn't get one back. He got one, two, three. So he got three out of five back, but he didn't get a ghoul and a mummy. Um... But he is down basically just three cannon fodder players that no one cares about. So two positionals down out of seven. And he is down to ten. So my strategy now when setting up is containment. So go wide. And then once you've gone wide, um, stop him running past you. Um, squidge him into one of the sidelines. And then just slowly use attrition. Um, you know, stop him running past you. And then just slide around the side and then kill him. Um, so... What I should be doing, should be doing here from a strategic point of view, is blocking off both wide zones and then either channeling him into the middle and then holding him or just not letting him pass at all. So my setup here is with that in mind, but it is also to try and defend my players so they don't get, you know, that the two killers don't get removed. Um, and if I look at this now, this is actually done apart from the kickoff, which we do need to pause and just consider for a second. Um, I think I'm a little bit narrow here. If we flip this round, a good way to, to look at this is if you were Ducky, what would you do here? Well, you absolutely are not coming down here. 
you can't get through the middle. So you know you're going to go that way if you're going to choose to score quickly. And the correct strategic decision, I think, is to try to score quickly. Um, on that basis, we've given him... Yeah, he's going to blitz this warrior here. So we know that that's the blitz. So this warrior and this warrior should be swapped because the one in the middle is slightly less valuable. And really, do we need to give away that width? What would happen if the entire defense just moved right one square? And I think the answer is hardly anything. I don't think he suddenly flips his mind and goes this way, but I think it just moves all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players all just across by one. And it's just subtle, but I think it was important. So let's see if we flip around the warriors. How we do, good. But I think the bigger problem is we move. We need to have moved slightly across one. Um, I also think that him on the wing, on the wing he is not going to go down, not super strong. Now let's consider Ducky's team. So he's got one, two, three, four, four skellies. Four skellies out of ten, which are all absolute garbage players. He's got one mummy, one mighty blow white. Um, but this initial setup is just saying containment. I'm just going to hold, I'm just going to contain. So we're probably okay here. Okay, well he's got fame. Um, he doesn't have more fan factor than us, but he does have more fame. Um, so uh, this could be a thing. And what we've just seen there... What we've just seen there is... Um, one, two, three, four, five players gone down to none, five to none. Um, so I fall over on a five plus or a six plus, he falls over on a six plus. So we missed six, 10 six pluses in a row, not the end of the world. Um, and he found five, um, five pluses out of 11. That's quite bad, that's quite bad. Um, but more than that, one, two, three, four players have all fallen over on my flank that I'm exposed on. Yeah, imagine one, two, three, four, five. Imagine these five fall over. Um, it's not too bad, but I've got one dude that stand up. You know, immediately I think you should ask yourself, well, okay, where's my blitz this turn? What do I want to achieve? And on top of that, if we took this board and chopped it into four, um, if the ball falls in this quadrant, it lets him push forwards. If it falls into this quadrant, it lets him push that way. So we had a combination of the, the KOs, uh, the stuns, and the ball going forwards. If the ball had gone back here, then I think we might be okay. We might just get away with it. If all goes back here, might get away with it. Goes over here, it's even worse. So it's a pretty bad kickoff from a direction point of view. Um, so what you should do, I think, is ducky here is you should absolutely press home the advantage because if you think how the game from a thought experiment point of view, so ducky scores in two or three, um, that puts me on turn 11. I score back in three, that puts me on turn 14 when he next gets the, you know, I get my next chance the ball that gives me three turns to go into his half find the ball turn him over and score three turns and that's if he takes three turns to score and i can take three turns to score i would say the probability of me turning over a full 11 men undead team in three turns of a coach of ducky's caliber is almost nil so if he scores here the game is put to bed um this comes out, which is a nice choice that he made earlier in the half. Uh, sorry, earlier in the game. He gets to foul with impunity there. Luckily for me, it doesn't break. So his fouls this game have been disappointing. So it hasn't all been um, ducky. It's been some team ducky. Um, but not everything. And if we look at this, what, what on earth am I going to do here? Oh, this is, this is a really nice tag. Um... I, so that takes away one of my one, two, three, four, five standing players. At the end of the turn, these guys are just going to unstun. That is it. That is all they're going to do is unstun. Um, and I think what I should have done here is say, hey, come and be in the center. Because what I did with that Curse Warrior was try and stop another foul. That's not relevant. That's not going to lose me the game. What's going to lose me the game is if he pushes down here some more. So this warrior should have should have come... One, two, three, four, five, and being stood there. This guy should have just come into the centre. I want Ducky to go back in the middle, and so I should have pushed harder to the left, because then he would have rotated into the middle. By leaving this flank open, which is the same mistake I made 
at the start of the drive, he has said, thanks very much, and legged it down the sideline. So he is punishing me for my choices here. And now we've got a slight problem with a gap on the back corner. He needs something stood there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a go for it. That, a go for it's probably okay. I think with three re-rolls, you need to stand something there. Um, because otherwise I can sneak around the back. Um, my other choices here, of course, are to try and nail one of these guys and get some tackle on the ball. The problem with nailing one of these guys on the front here is that if we go for it and we don't knock them over, that's got strength four and guard, and that's got guard. He will just block me out of the way. Right, this is the, uh, the, the sort of the next turn I want to quickly look at. So this Cow's Warrior is standing up. Right. At that point, um, let's just try and draw on the screen a little bit. Um, what we've got here is this guy can block this way with Frenzy, push there, and then push there. So he ends up being stood in that square there, right? <clears throat> now, if we've got this guy, <coughs> excuse me, if we got this guy pushed in out of the way um, and we get push push, so ideally we get push in the first block here, um, so that our beastman ends up stood in that square there and he ends up stood in that square there, we can then walk with this guy to there and we can blitz. And we've also got a guard player here, look, who could also stand in that square. So we could put guard in that square there and we could blitz from that square there. That's two dice on the ball with tackle. Um, our recovery doesn't, you know, isn't great. We've got a guy that's lying down. We've got one free Chaos Warrior there. Our ball carrier is off screen way over there, um, which is why it shouldn't have been on the flank. Um, so it's not great recovery, but at least it's on the floor. And he's only got one edge four player. What I end up doing instead, because I don't do this, what I end up doing is probably the thing that is defining in this half. And what I end up trying to do, and what's going through my mind at the start, at the, sorry, during the turn, is try and stop him, just try and slow him down, just try and slow him down. Maybe you can turn him over, try and slow him down. And to try and slow him down is not what he was looking for. We should have taken the push there. We had the push. Um, and we can try and get through. And I end up trying to deal with this guard white. It doesn't work. I don't re-roll it, which I think is also probably a mistake. I think I should have gone gone for the re-roll, try and get the removal, um, and try and then wedge stuff in here. Because my plan was to wedge stuff in here and slow him down. Because I'm slowly recovering over here. Um, and I don't. Because the mummy's trapped. He's only got these four players. But looking at this, that's all he needs. He can just walk this in next turn and score. Which is exactly what he does. So, congratulations, Ducky. And I think at this point, once you give a player of Ducky's calibre, one of the players with the highest win rate in CCL, um, a 2-0 head start, you're not turning that round. So... Look at that. Um, one of my KOs comes back. Uh, for him, he gets both, uh, sorry, his mummy back. Um, so he's still sat on the 11. And he's sat on the 11 at this point with um, a 2 0 head start. Um, I'm going to now skip forward to the next interesting part in the turn. We're going to get another pitch invasion. We lose three, um, which is a bit of a momentum problem. Not the end of the world, but a bit of a momentum problem. And I'm just going to skip it forward to the next interesting thing that happens. Uh, which is let Ducky have his turn. There we go. Right, at this point, um, I've got to score next turn. So the ball has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I need to kind of be stood somewhere on here. Um, you know, one of these three squares here. Over there or over here. Um... This guy doesn't have block. So I was looking at this in real time and I thought, well, he's can get all the way around the top so he can be on the top of my screen. He can get one, two, three, four, five. He could be sort of stood here. So I could have one there, one there. The ball runs through. Um, this Chaos Warrior can run through and tag this guy out and I can basically make an L shape like that with the ball tucked somewhere in there. 
It doesn't need to be a cage, it just needs to be a screen and I can run on and score next turn. It's fine. Um, however, what do I need to do? Well, this is like one of the things I will say in the coaching sessions that I do, work out what you need to do, either this turn or next turn or the turn after, and work backwards from that point because finding the solution is loads easier coming backwards than it is going forwards because you'll go forward, then go, oh, that didn't work, damn. Um, okay, let's try something else. So work backwards. So what we do here is go one, two, three, four, five, six. So he can stand there. So we know that that can be there or there. We can go one, two, three, four, five, six. We can be there. So that's one screen piece. One, two, three, four, five. So we know that that's the other screen piece. So these two are going in these two squares here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can be there. It's fine. That is going to be a, that is going to be completely fine for a screen. So I need to keep walking through this square here or this square here. So when I blitz. If I blitz from this square here, and I have blocked this one, I can't walk through that diagonal. So my blitz has to be there, because I have to be able to get through, so my other assist needs to go there. That's how I should work this out. My assist has to go there, because I need to be able to walk through blitz, hopefully get the you know some form of knockdown, and then you know, relieve myself afterwards out of the way, uh, and get through. What I end up doing is this. Taking a go for it, which I don't need to take, and taking uh, the square that I need to get in. So unless this is a straight up removal, I can't get through. Luckily we get the pal, but we don't get a removal. Apart from on the piling on, which is a KO. But that's no good to us, because that doesn't let us get into scoring range. I have to score next turn, otherwise I've got two turns to turn him over, and there's no, there's no chance I'm turning over a full 11 with two turns. So I end up having to change my plan halfway through the turn, and I go this way. We know that I need to tag out some players because I'm a little bit tagged here. I'm three down on this side. So let's start slowing him down. Let's not give him a full 11 to go and get in the way. Um, so this is why I do decide that we have basing is a good idea. And we get a, a case screen set up. So this is fine. And I think if I was Ducky here, what I would be looking to do is try and get as many players in, in the way as possible because it's not you're going to stop me scoring, it's you just need to slow me down. So I think that would have been a blitz because then you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get there, get there, get there, get there. Because they're the four key squares. You just need to have two here and then two here. And if you do that, you stop me scoring by one turn, which will probably outright win you the game. So I think the ghouls should be running away. I think the white should be running away. Um... And that was one one of the few things I think from, from Ducky's turn that I, I personally disagree with. As it stands, um, I can score next turn. And I think what I should have done was go and score. Um, I ended up screwing around, and by screwing around, well, you don't see it on this. Um, I roll a one on the actual go for it. Um, which cost me a reroll. So, same mistake here. We don't go wide enough. This should be wider because I need to be able to get round both sides. So, I shouldn't be thinking about protecting the players at this point. I should just be thinking about be as wide as possible so I've got the maximum width. Because if you go narrow here, this guy, one, two, three, four. Look at that diagonal he has to walk through. Ducky only needs to defend there and there, which is slightly more compact, easier to defend because you can be thicker. If you've got the same number of players to only spread over 8, 9 squares width rather than 11 squares width, there's going to be less gaps, less spaces for me to run through, um, and therefore we're going to have a problem. Uh, another favourable ducky kickoff. So uh, he gets a high kick and he catches it in the rain. Um, and at this point, he can now do whatever he wants. I think I would bring the ball forward. And I think he ends up doing that. And what he's going to set up now, he's going to set up a two-layer screen. Because all he needs to do is just stop me getting into his half. So I, I like I like this. Um, you see this sometimes at tabletop where a coach will say, no, 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 I'm not going to let you through. So they go for two squares width, like this, on the front screen. And then you can either double stack straight away or you can single stack. doesn't matter. It's the same concept, it's the same effect. Um, he gets back the zombie that I killed earlier, just without block. Uh, 
and then by bringing this forward it gives you the choice to either then continue on being forwards or drop back So, Blitz here, I want to try and tag some of these players. But notice here, look, if I was stood in that square there, this guy could just run around the side. Look look at the subtlety difference um, of what we've got here. This is a mistake from me. I should have been further wide. This guy should have been stood here. So, and by pushing in here, this is an unopposed assist. He's got a strength four block player. That is two dice. If you block two dice here, You've then got you can unlock two dice everywhere else so i've actually not done myself any favors here if you're going to do that you have to push guard in all these three squares and i'm too bothered about this guy getting knocked over um to consider putting guard in the right places never mind ducky comes along and julie punishes me so uh, we'll just see what happens here Because if you're going to go in, if you're going to go in all men, you have to, you have to be able to lock it up so you can't get punched in the face, especially when you're on the clock like I am. He runs away, and at this point, you look, look at this. It's turn 15. I'm not getting out of this. Maybe what I could have done, I mean, this is just something I'm starting to see now, is if one of these two, if one of these two was still stood up, um, you could blitz here, pushing here. Nah, it's not going to work, is it? I'd need to be. I need to blitz here and push him there, which is an illegal move, and then you could push him there. But no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. We have to have a scoring threat. So um, round Ducky, I have to go round the back and round the sides. Um, and I think um, even if I manage to make all of those things, he could easily just try and punt it down here. So I need I need beastmen here. I need to have some beastmen here, and I just don't have the players. I don't have the players in the right places. Chaos are not. Not good at turning over 11 people in three turns. And then we've got two dice on this. But what we haven't managed to do is put any pressure whatsoever um, on the ball. Um, at best, there's a little tiny bit of pressure on this guy here. It's just, it's unfortunately just a little too late. Um, and what I'm going to do is the uh, the final show. I'll show you what he actually did. Um, so he presented me with this problem, um, which is here. Um, so I thought he was going to back up or go just charge forward. What he very cleverly did here was um, provide a double screen screen, um, which I can't get through. Um, and there is only one outcome here, which is one dice block one of these guys and attempt to knock it down and then blitz through on a four plus dodge, four plus dodge, three plus dodge. Um, to go for it to get this guy. So we go for the blitz. We roll in at one. And we roll a three, I think. Yeah, roll a three and it's game over. So um, that's me out of the chalice um, again <laughs> in the first round. It's coming a bit of a habit now. Um, overall blocks, we actually threw less blocks. That's partly because in the second half I was not in control of the, in the game. Um, but we did get 11 removals from our 38 blocks and 16 nodes were armor breaks. So I can't complain about the armor dice. I think if I was summing that up, um, I left enough chances in the first half overall, cumulatively, for him to stop me scoring, which were all, all preventable. So although he got a thermonuclear weapon warhead missile um, on me and it absolutely paid off, you know, low single digit percentage, I did rather leave myself open to it. Um, and if you had wound that fireball up a little bit and said, do you know what, you only knock over any two, I think if you went back and you know looked at that point on the replay and just said to yourself, knock over any two, pick two, um, I think you take the ball off me. Um, I also think that the ball should have been back a little bit, so the wizard is a problem. Um, my positioning by pushing forward rather than um, pushing back into the centre is a problem and that's something as an overhang from playing in CCL against maybe a slightly lower standard of player from time to time where I can push down a sideline and I will just find a way through. I need to go back and I need to play in the middle and I need to stop looking for serves. Um, and I think that Ducky played the, the whole thing pretty, pretty well. Um, I only saw one major mistake um, in the second half where he 
shouldn't have left me the two dice on the ball uh, that was there with a couple of three pluses. Um, but even then, he probably gets that back and recovers. Um, and then the final thing, which absolutely defined the game above all of the other things, was the pitch invasion at the start of the second half. If that doesn't happen, I think I'm odds on to turn him over and we push this into 1-1 and then who knows what happens. Um, so, yeah. Bit of a difficult one to, to, to sort of deal with, but actually watching it back has helped me. It has found me uh, some things to look for. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave any comments uh, in the chat below. Uh, if you want, you message me on Discord. There will be a link in the, in the uh, analytics. Um, and thank you very much for watching. Uh, remember to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you.